This is my house. Hi, I'm Bryce Tomlinson from NewDepthMedia.com and today on MindPower I'm going to show you how to replace your video card. My video card has bit the dust and the fan on it is making kind of a chipper shredder sound. So since that's happening I have decided to replace the video card, not to mention that the display no longer works on it. Make sure that before you do anything with any of the components in your computer that you always have everything unplugged, no cables attached, no power going to it, and you touch some place on the chassis of the computer so that you discharge all your static. It should also be said that the advised method of doing this is to first go in and uninstall the drivers for your video card. This can be done by right clicking on your My Computer Computer, go to your hardware manager, then uninstall the video card that is installed currently. Then you'll need to power down your computer, you uninstall your video card, and then you put in your new one. In this case, my video card already started malfunctioning and I don't have the use of it. So literally, I can't boot up my computer right now to uninstall the old video card. So I'm going to have to find a way around that. First, remove the screw that holds the video card in, and that is right here. I do that from the outside of this particular case and make sure you hold on to it. Don't let the screw fall into the case. There's a wonderful tab right on the back of the video card on the motherboard and it's right there. And if you take that little tab and pull it away from the video card as you're pulling the back of the video card out, your video card is free to move about the cabin. So now that we've made room for our new video card, we have an open slot. This particular motherboard has two PCI Express video card slots. This way you can pair up two video cards and have it running twice as good a performance. In this case, I'm not going to do that, but I do have an SLI chip in there and you want to make sure that if you do put in two video cards for the SLI mode that you flip that little thing over so that it's in dual mode. So the video card that I'm going to install here is uh, an EVGA GeForce GTS 450. It's really a rather large contraption. Most of it is the fan and the heat sink. It's sort of a wind tunnel and you see that it's got exhaust vents out the back. This particular video card no longer has the S video out of it, which I didn't use in the first place, but I do use the DVI outputs and on this particular one it's got an HDMI output right there, whereas this one required an adapter to plug into the DVI outputs, which is still pretty cool, but this makes it a little easier. But you notice that this one is twice as wide as this one. That means that it literally will take up two slot spots in the back of the computer. And that means I've got to take one of these other screws out right here and remove the cover on it. But you can see by looking at it that with all these cables and stuff in here, this is going to be kind of cramped for space. I am not even sure how in the world I'm going to fit all of this in here. Pay especially close attention when you're um, pulling on all these cables that you're not unplugging them from the motherboard. Of course, you want to make sure that you have the slot lined up properly. There's on this particular uh, video card, it's keyed. So you have a little notch up here and then you have, of course, the hook on the back that indicates that it hooks into that little latch that we unclipped earlier. So I'm going to be very careful putting that thing right down in that spot and let that little latch click into place. And we want the metal plates up here to really sit flat right up here. I think we got it sitting in there pretty nice and put both screws back in. And you want these screws to be good and tight because this is a video card and you plug stuff into it. And as you plug and unplug stuff, it's very easy to shift the card around in its slot if it's not fastened down properly. And you can ruin your computer that way. There is one last connector that I have to plug into this thing. It has um, six little pins on it. And this is going to plug into one of my power connectors. 
actually two power connectors. I think this is what they call a rail line. I'll make sure that I have a couple of power connectors available for this. There is just enough room to maybe squeeze this power line in for the video card. Here we go. Just barely got it in there. The plug is now plugged directly into the back of the video card and it's a really tight fit with the hard drives in here. So I literally had to squeeze it right in between all the power and SATA plugs on the back of the hard drive. I wanna make sure that all my fans are clear of the wires. All right, the next step would be to close it up and see if it works. So as it turns out, the mini HDMI connector that's on the back of this card, it's for a mini HDMI plug, which I don't have. I did have to actually use the DVI to HDMI adapter that I had from my old video card, and I just plugged that into my DVI connector on the back of my video card. All right, here's a big heads up. Since Windows was first activated on this computer, the hardware on this computer has changed significantly. Due to these changes, Windows must be reactivated within three days. Do you want to reactivate now? Let's find out what happens when we do. And we're going to activate Windows over the internet here and click next. No, I don't want to register now. You have successfully activated your copy of Windows. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.